Hey everyone, and welcome to a deep dive that takes us on a journey through time. We're tackling a question that's been debated forever. Is history actually useful? Does knowing about things that happened ages ago really help us in today's world? I mean, I can see both sides of it. Yeah. On the one hand, it's like, why should I care about ancient empires when I'm just trying to figure out these new tech gadgets? Right. But then again, maybe history holds some secret keys to understanding the present and even the future. What do you think? Exactly. And that's what we're going to explore today. Okay. We'll unpack some compelling arguments on both sides, starting with those who think history is, well, kind of bunk. Oh, okay, let's dive into that. Let's dive into the history's bunk camp. One argument I've heard is that the world is changing at such a crazy pace mm -hmm. that anything from the past just seems outdated. Think about it. Technology, communication, even social norms are evolving faster than ever. Oh, yeah. So how can historical events that happened in a completely different context still be relevant today? Yeah. It's like trying to use a 19th century map to navigate a modern city. Yeah. Things have changed so much. And on top of that, there's the issue of bias. History is often written from a particular perspective, which means we might be getting an incomplete or even distorted view of the past. Absolutely. We have to be critical of the sources we rely on. Sometimes records are incomplete. Sometimes evidence is lost over time. That means we're dealing with an imperfect picture of the past, which makes it tricky to draw d definitive conclusions or claim that it's a totally reliable guide for the present. Okay, so those are some pretty strong arguments against history's relevance. But before we toss our history books out the window, let's hear what the pro-history side has to say. What do you think is their strongest argument? I think the most compelling argument for studying history is that it reveals fundamental truths about human nature and how societies work. Hmm. Technology changes, but people not so much. That's interesting. It makes me think about all those repeating patterns throughout history, empires rising and falling revolutions sparked by similar grievances, political systems going through cycles of corruption and reform. It's like history is this giant laboratory of human behavior. Precisely. And by studying these patterns, we can understand how societies function, make decisions, and ultimately succeed or fail. That knowledge can be incredibly valuable for navigating our own world. Okay, so I see how understanding the past can shed light on the present. But what about the future? How can learning about what's already happened help us with what's to come? That's where understanding transitions and turning points becomes crucial. By studying how societies adapted or failed to adapt to major shifts, we can learn to anticipate and navigate change ourselves. Think about the Industrial Revolution. Oh, wow. It completely reshaped economies, social structures, and even how we thought about work and progress. Whoa, the Industrial Revolution. Now that was a game changer. And even though it happened centuries ago, we're still grappling with its effects in the digital age. It's like these historical echoes that shape our present. Exactly. And just like societies had to adapt to the Industrial Revolution, we're facing our own set of challenges in the 21st century. Climate change, technological disruptions, political shift. Understanding how people in the past dealt with upheaval can give us valuable insights into how we might approach our own era of change. Okay, so history can help us build resilience and adaptability, which seem like pretty essential skills in today's world. But let's not forget about the personal side of things. I think history also plays a huge role in personal growth, right? Absolutely. Learning about different cultures, social movements, or even past injustices can broaden our perspectives and help us develop empathy. We can learn from the struggles and triumphs of others, which can ultimately make us more compassionate and understanding individuals. It's like gaining wisdom from generations past, almost like having a conversation with people who lived through incredible moments in history. And sometimes those conversations can challenge our assumptions and make us reevaluate our own beliefs. That kind of critical self-reflection is so important for personal growth. Okay, so history can make us smarter, more empathetic, and better at dealing with change. But let's get down to the brass tacks. Are there any concrete, real-world benefits to studying history? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I'd argue that history is one of the most underrated paths to success in various fields. Really? Tell me more. Well, think about the skills you develop when you study history. Critical thinking, evaluating sources, constructing arguments, communicating complex ideas. These are highly sought after skills in almost every profession you can think of. You're totally right. I never thought of it that way, but it makes perfect sense. Imagine a lawyer building a case 
a marketer crafting a persuasive campaign, or a CEO making a strategic decision. They all need those analytical and communication skills that history buffs hone every day. Precisely. And there are tons of examples of people with history backgrounds thriving in all sorts of unexpected fields. They might not be coding or crunching numbers, but they're using their historical knowledge and critical thinking skills to solve problems and make informed decisions. So it's not just about becoming a historian or a professor. History can actually give you a leg up in the job market. That's a pretty good selling point, don't you think? It is. And beyond the purely professional advantages, there are deeper benefits. Understanding history can make us more informed citizens, better equipped to participate in our communities and make a positive impact. Yeah. It's like history gives us the tools to understand how systems work, how decisions are made, and how we can make our voices heard. That's powerful stuff. And if we connect this to the bigger picture, studying history can deepen our appreciation for cultural diversity, foster inclusivity, and help us connect with people from different backgrounds. It's like expanding our circle of empathy to encompass the entire human experience, past and present. That's a beautiful way to think about it. It is, and it highlights why history matters. It's not just about memorizing baits and battles. It's about understanding who we are, where we come from, and how we can create a better future together. That's a fantastic way to sum it up. But before we get too philosophical, I want to share a story that really brings this to life. I heard about this investor who really understands market cycles. Okay. You know those times when everything's booming and then suddenly crashes? Ah, yes. The classic boom and bust cycle. Exactly. Well, this investor has studied history and realized that these cycles aren't random. They're predictable patterns that have been playing out for centuries. Interesting. So armed with this historical knowledge, the investor can make smarter decisions. They don't get swept up in the hype when the market's hot, and they don't panic when things take a downturn. Right, because they understand that these fluctuations are part of a larger cycle, and by knowing where they are in that cycle, they can make more informed choices. Exactly. And that historical perspective can lead to better outcomes. It's like having a secret weapon in the world of finance. It also highlights how historical knowledge can help us avoid making rash decisions driven by fear or greed. Especially when everyone else seems to be losing their cool. It's like history can help you stay calm and rational, even in chaos. Exactly. But that doesn't mean we should blindly follow historical patterns. Remember we were talking about how the world is constantly changing? Yeah. Well, that means we need to be adaptable and willing to adjust our strategies based on new information. Right. It's not about finding a one-size-fits-all solution from the past. It's about understanding those underlying principles and applying them creatively to our own unique circumstances. That's the key. History can provide a framework for understanding the world, but it's up to us to use that framework wisely and adapt it to the challenges of the present. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We explored why some people think history is irrelevant and why others see it as an incredible source of knowledge and wisdom. What do you think? Are you leaning one way or another? You know, I think it's more nuanced than just declaring a winner in the history is useful versus history is bunk debate. Both sides raise valid points. The world is changing rapidly and not every historical lesson is a perfect blueprint for today. But the deeper truths about human nature, how societies work, and how change unfolds, those are timeless insights that history reveals. I see what you mean. And those insights can help us become more informed, more insightful, and more capable individuals no matter what path we choose in life. Maybe the question isn't, is history useful? But rather, how can we make history useful in our own lives? Exactly. And I think the answer lies in cultivating curiosity, approaching history with an open mind, and looking for those connections between the past and the present. It's like history is this giant puzzle, and we're all trying to piece it together one fascinating discovery at a time. And sometimes the most unexpected pieces turn out to be the most illuminating. Welcome back to our deep dive into the relevance of history. Before the break, we explored some of the big arguments for and against studying history. I'm sensing you're starting to see the potential value here. You know me, always eager to connect the dots and find those aha moments. Right. And honestly, I am finding some real gems in this material. So you promised more fascinating examples of how historical knowledge has been put into action. Okay, let's start with something you might not expect the tech world. 
You might think Silicon Valley is all about the future, but some of the most successful tech innovators actually drew inspiration from history. Really? I wouldn't have guessed that. Give me an example. Take Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. He was fascinated by history and design and saw a clear connection between the two. He believed that understanding the evolution of design from ancient architecture to modern art was crucial for creating truly innovative products. That's so interesting. So it wasn't just about the technology itself, but about how it was presented and how it interacted with people on an aesthetic and emotional level. Exactly. Jobs saw beauty and functionality in historical designs, and he wanted to bring that same sensibility to technology. And it clearly worked. Apple products are known for their sleek design and user-friendly interfaces. Those qualities were heavily influenced by Jobs' appreciation of historical aesthetics. So Steve Jobs' tech visionary was also a bit of a history buff. Mm -hmm. Got it. What about other examples? Let's shift to the world of business. One of the key challenges for any entrepreneur is understanding market trends and anticipating shifts in consumer behavior. Right, it's all about staying ahead of the curve and spotting opportunities before anyone else. And history can be an incredibly powerful tool for doing just that. There are countless examples of businesses that have used historical data to make strategic decisions. I'm talking everything from identifying new markets to developing innovative products. Okay, now you've got me hooked. Give me a specific example. I love a good case study. All right, a few years ago, there was this clothing company that was struggling to stay relevant. Their designs were outdated, their marketing was stale, and they were losing customers to trendier competitors. Oh yeah, they were in a tough spot. What did they do? Instead of panicking, they decided to step back and look at the history of fashion. Mm. They dug into archives, studied old photographs and magazines, and analyzed the cyclical nature of trends. Interesting. So they were looking for those repeating patterns, those styles that might be ready for a comeback. Exactly. And they struck gold. They uncovered these forgotten design elements, fabrics and silhouettes that had been hugely popular decades ago, but had fallen out of favor. Let me guess. They took those historical elements and gave them a modern twist. You nailed it. They created this new line of clothing that blended vintage aesthetics with contemporary cuts and fabrics. Brilliant. They used history to create something fresh and exciting that resonated with those consumers who were looking for something different. And it was a huge success. Their sales skyrocketed and they completely revitalized their brand. What a turnaround story. That's a perfect example of how history can be this unexpected source of inspiration and innovation, even in a fast paced industry like fashion. It also highlights the importance of looking beyond the obvious and seeking inspiration in unexpected places. Sometimes the best ideas are hidden in plain sight, just waiting to be rediscovered. Okay, so history can inspire tech innovations, guide business decisions, and even predict fashion trends. I'm really starting to see the possibilities, but what about those really big complex problems that societies face? Can history really help with those? That's where it gets even more interesting. History can't give us all the answers, of course, but it can provide crucial context, reveal potential pitfalls, and highlight strategies that have worked or failed in the past. I'm particularly interested in preventing conflict. Can history actually help us avoid wars or create more peaceful societies? That's a huge question, one that historians and political scientists have been grappling with for centuries. There's no easy answer, but studying history can certainly give us a better understanding of the factors that contribute to conflict and the conditions that promote peace. It's like learning from past mistakes, identifying those warning signs, and hopefully finding ways to break those destructive cycles. Exactly. By studying the history of wars, revolutions, and social movements, we can gain insights into the root causes of conflict, the dynamics of power, and the complexities of diplomacy. And maybe just maybe by understanding those patterns, we can find ways to prevent them from repeating in the future. That's the hope. It's like that saying, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. But I also wonder, can history help us with those big global challenges we're facing now, like climate change, economic inequality, or political polarization? That's what I'm wondering too. Are there any historical parallels that could offer guidance? It's definitely not a magic bullet, but understanding history can be a powerful tool for addressing those challenges. Think about climate change. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the scale and urgency of the problem. 
But history shows us that societies have faced and overcome environmental challenges before. Right, like the Dust Bowl in the 1930s or the ozone layer depletion crisis in the 1980s. Those were major environmental wake-up calls. Exactly. By studying those examples, we can learn about policies that work, technological innovations that helped, and social movements that drove change. It gives us a roadmap, a set of potential solutions that we can adapt and apply to our current situation. So it's not about copying those past solutions exactly, but understanding the principles behind them and finding ways to translate them to our present day context. Exactly. And that's where historical knowledge and critical thinking are so crucial. We need to be able to analyze past events, identify key factors, and figure out how to apply those lessons to our own unique circumstances. I love this idea of history as a source of hope and inspiration, not just a record of past mistakes. Yes, we've messed up before, but we've also learned from those mistakes and found ways to make things better. That's a powerful message. History reminds us that progress is possible even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. But that progress rarely happens overnight. It takes time, effort, and often a lot of trial and error. So we need to be patient and persistent and remember that we're part of a much larger story that's been unfolding for centuries. Exactly. We're not starting from scratch. We can draw on the wisdom and experience of those who came before us. Okay. I'm officially on board the History is Awesome train. Mm. But I'm curious, are there any potential pitfalls of relying too heavily on history? Is there such a thing as being too history-minded? That's a great question. And yes, there are definitely some potential downsides to being overly reliant on history. One is the danger of falling into the trap of presentism. That's basically judging the past by the standards of the present. Oh, I've definitely seen that. People getting outraged about something that happened centuries ago, even though the norms and values were completely different back then. Right. And while it's important to acknowledge past wrongs and learn from them, it's also crucial to understand the historical context and avoid imposing our own present day morals and judgments on people who lived in a different time. It's like trying to understand a different culture. You have to approach it with an open mind and a willingness to learn rather than judging everything based on your own limited perspective. Exactly. And another potential pitfall is assuming that history is this fixed, unchanging narrative. It's easy to think, well, this is what happened and there's nothing we can do about it now, but history is actually constantly being reinterpreted and debated. That's right. New evidence emerges, perspectives shift, and our understanding of the past evolves over time. What was considered truth a hundred years ago might be seen very differently today. Exactly. So it's important to approach history with a critical eye to question assumptions and to be open to different perspectives. We need to be aware of potential biases and recognize that history is often told from the perspective of those in power. It's like that saying, history is written by the victors. We need to make sure we're getting the full story and hearing from those whose voices might have been silenced or marginalized in the past. And that's where the real tower of history lies. It's not just about memorizing facts, it's about engaging in a constant dialogue with the past, challenging our own assumptions, and seeking a more nuanced and complete understanding of the human experience. So history can be an incredibly powerful tool, but it's important to use it wisely with an awareness of its limitations and potential biases. And most importantly, with a sense of curiosity and a desire to learn from those who came before us. Okay, yeah, I think we've officially demolished the myth that history is just a bunch of dusty old facts. We've seen how it can inform our present inspiring innovation and even guide us toward a better future. We've even started to unpack how we can avoid some of the pitfalls of approaching history in a rigid or biased way. But before we get too carried away with all this history love, let's shift gears a bit and explore a slightly different perspective. Oh, I'm intrigued. What other angle are we going to explore? Well, I think it's time we take a closer look at how history has been traditionally taught and learned. Are there better ways to engage with the past? Should we be questioning the narratives we've been told? Now, those are questions worth pondering. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been exploring the relevance of history, and I think we've successfully busted the myth that it's just about memorizing names and dates. Absolutely. We've seen how history can be this amazing source of insights, inspiration, and even practical guidance for navigating the present and shaping the future. But as with anything, there are always different perspectives and even criticisms. 
So in this final part, we're going to shake things up a bit and ask some tough questions about how history has traditionally been taught and learned. Okay, I'm ready to get critical. What are some concerns people have raised about the way history is often presented? One of the biggest criticisms I've heard is that traditional history education can be a bit too focused on memorization and rote learning. You know, like those endless timelines and lists of battles we all had to cram for back in school. Ah, yes. The classic memorize, regurgitate, forget approach. Yeah. Not exactly the most engaging or inspiring way to learn about the past. Right. And it can create this sense that history is this fixed, unchanging narrative, which we know isn't true at all. History is constantly being debated, reinterpreted, and rewritten as new evidence emerges and perspectives evolve. Exactly. And that's where the real excitement lies. In the ongoing process of discovery, the challenge of piecing together the puzzle of the past and the realization that there's always more to learn. So if memorization isn't the answer, what's a better way to teach and learn history? Hmm. What does a more engaging and dynamic approach look like? I think it starts with shifting the focus from memorizing facts to developing critical thinking skills. Instead of just asking what happened, we should be encouraging students to ask, why did it happen? And what were the consequences? It's like turning history into this giant detective game where students are the investigators piecing together clues, analyzing evidence, and forming their own interpretations. Exactly. And that kind of act of learning fosters curiosity, deepens understanding, and makes history come alive in a way that rote memorization never could. I love that. And it also helps students develop those critical thinking skills that are so valuable in all aspects of life, not just in a history classroom. Absolutely. Another important aspect of a more dynamic approach to history is incorporating diverse perspectives. For far too long, history has been told from a very narrow, often Eurocentric viewpoint, which excludes the experiences and contributions of countless cultures and peoples. Right. It's like we've been missing out on huge chunks of the human story. Those alternative narratives that can challenge our assumptions and give us a more complete understanding of the past. Exactly. So a more inclusive approach to history would involve exploring those marginalized voices, those stories that have been traditionally silenced or overlooked. It's about acknowledging that history isn't just about kings and queens, battles and empires. It's about the everyday lives of people from all walks of life, their struggles, their triumphs, their contributions to the tapestry of human experience. And by incorporating those diverse voices, we can create a richer, more nuanced and ultimately more accurate portrayal of the past. It's not about erasing or rewriting history. It's about expanding our understanding and creating a more inclusive and representative narrative. Exactly. And in this day and age, we have something that can really help us with that technology. We have access to an unprecedented amount of historical information right at our fingertips. That's so true. We can explore virtual museums, dive into digital archives, connect with historians and researchers from all over the world, all with a few clicks. It's incredible, and it's opening up so many possibilities for how we teach, learn, and even experience history. It's amazing to think that instead of just reading textbooks, students can now engage with the past in a much more immersive and interactive way. They can explore 3D reconstructions of ancient cities, analyze historical documents online, or even create their own digital projects that bring history to life. Technology can also help us connect with our own personal histories in new ways. We can use genealogy websites to trace our family trees, explore historical maps to learn about the places our ancestors lived, and even share our own family stories online. It's like technology is empowering us to become our own historians, to uncover those hidden connections to the past, and create a more personal and meaningful relationship with history. And that's ultimately what it's all about fostering a sense of connection, curiosity, and understanding, and recognizing that history isn't just about what happened in the past. It's about how those events continue to shape who we are today and who we might become in the future. Wow, what an incredible journey this has been. We've gone from debating whether history even matters to exploring how it can inform our present, inspire innovation, and guide us toward a better future. We've even challenged some traditional ways of thinking about history and explored how technology can help us create a more engaging, inclusive, and multifaceted understanding of the past. So as we wrap up this episode, I'm curious, what's one key takeaway you'd like our listeners to leave with? What's that aha moment you hope they've had? I think the 
biggest takeaway is that history is not just a collection of dusty old facts. It's a living, breathing narrative that's constantly evolving and shaping our world. And by engaging with it critically, curiously, and with an open mind, we can unlock its power to inform our present, inspire our future, and ultimately make us more thoughtful, insightful, and connected individuals. Beautifully said. And on that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive into the relevance of history. We hope you've enjoyed the journey and discovered something new and thought-provoking along the way. Remember, the past is never truly past. It lives on in us, in our stories, in our choices, and in the world we create together. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning from those who came before us. Because as we've seen today, history's more than just a subject to be studied. It's a conversation to be had, a story to be shared, and a journey to be embraced. 